we all know and love the catchy phrase hakuna matata or the word simba and rafiki and probably the most famous of them all safari but did you know that their origins can be traced back to the swahili language welcome ladies and gentlemen to a journey through the origins of this fascinating language prepare to be swept away to the indian ocean coast of east africa where a linguistic tale unfolds like no other join me as we delve into the rich history cultural influences and remarkable expansion of this language picture this a region stretching over 2500 kilometers adorned with vibrant towns and beautiful islands from the bustling mogadishu in northeast africa to the mesmerizing sofala in southeast africa and the enchanting islands of lamu zanzibar and the pomoros it was here in this indian ocean coast of east africa that the swahili language emerged Centuries ago in the 8th century Arabian traders undertook daring journeys sailing foot on the East African coast over 35 independent trading cities like Mombasa, Gedi, Pate, Kilwa, Mogadishu and Zanzibar had been established as lucrative trade contacts with African tribes in the interior and states across the Indian Ocean such as Arabia, India and even China emerged The prolonged interactions between the Arabs and the local Bantu speaking communities built a remarkable linguistic fusion. The Arab traders introduced Arabic vocabulary which intertwined with the local Bantu grammar, giving rise to a breathtaking hybrid language which came to be known as Swahili. Imagine if you will the amount of challenges that are unfolded when the Arab traders first set foot on East Africa and couldn't understand the local inhabitants due to the language barrier. How long do you think it took for them to develop a common language that allowed them to bridge this communication gap and build fruitful relationships? Let us know in the comments below. Remarkably, the Swahili story extends far beyond its initial scope. It transcended boundaries to Oman, which is a country on the Arabian Peninsula. Oman is embraced the language which coexists with a deep admiration for Swahili music and culture. This traces back to the 1700s, a time when Oman flourished as a prominent empire. Led by Sultan Said Said, Oman is embarked on a journey to East Africa, not for trade this time, but to chase out the Portuguese who had invaded the region in the late 15th century. Vasco da Gama, the famous Portuguese explorer, had successfully sailed around the Cape of Good Hope in Southern Africa and navigated along the eastern coast of Africa before continuing his voyage to India. Throughout his expedition, he had made observations of the trade ships filled with precious cargo anchored in the Swahili ports along the African coastline. After his sword spread, the Portuguese invaded East Africa and constructed forts like the one in Mombasa as a means to control and oversee the trading activities in the region. In 1828, Sultan Said Said arrived in Zanzibar after defeating the Portuguese. Fast forward to 1940, the Sultan officially designated Stone Town of Zanzibar as the capital of the Sultanate. In this way, he held dominion over vast territories in the Middle East and East Africa. During this time, many Omani settled in East Africa where they engaged in business ventures and intermarried with the local communities, thus creating a vibrant Swahili culture. However, After East African countries gained independence in the early 1960s, the ruling Omani population, especially those in Zanzibar, encountered hostility from the indigenous African inhabitants. Most of them were compelled to migrate back to Oman. This group of immigrants consisted mostly of highly educated individuals and were extensively recruited within the Omani government. As a result, it is not uncommon to find numerous high-ranking Omani government officials whose first language is Swahili. Interestingly, Oman is also home to the largest population of Swahili speakers outside of Africa. Akaambia mm-hmm. mimi leo toka asubuhi mpaka sasa hivi nishauza vitu vingi sana. Kwa hisani yako nenda kanunue kwa jirani yangu hiyo. As trade networks blossomed, the appeal of Swahili transcended its coastal origins. Swahili speaking communities embarked on migrations, bringing their language to the vast inland regions of East Africa. It is spread like wildfire expanding to various ethnic groups who embrace Swahili as a secondary language. In the early 19th century, Swahili received a substantial boost 
it became the lingua franca of Arab ivory and slave caravans traversing the inland regions. Something worth noting is that Swahili not only served as a means of communication, but also played a pivotal role in introducing religions to local communities. As Arab traders arrived in East Africa, they brought not only their goods, but also their faith, Islam. Swahili became a powerful tool in conveying the teachings of Islam to the Bantu communities along the coast. In those early days, Swahili was primarily transcribed using the Arabic script, known as Ajami. Swahili embraced the beauty of this script and carved a unique path in written expression. Literature in this script emerged with the earliest known written documents dating back to 1711. As Europeans arrived in East Africa, Christianity also found its way into the region. The missionaries adopted Swahili and also utilized it as a medium to propagate Christianity. While the Arabs primarily concentrated along the coast, European missionaries ventured deeper into the inland regions. Looking at the maps highlighting African religions today, it is still evident how the religions were spread in East Africa. In June 1928, an interterritorial conference took place in Mombasa and was attended by representatives from Kenya, Tanganyika, Uganda and Zanzibar. During this conference, the Zanzibar dialect was selected as the standardized form of Swahili. Going forward, the colonial era arrived, bringing with it a complex set of changes and challenges. German dominance in East Africa marked a significant turning point for the Swahili language. With their control of a vast Swahili-speaking region, the Germans introduced a transition from the Ajami script to the Latin alphabet system. This transition had repercussions, as the Ajami script's usage declined in German East Africa. However, even well into the 1940s, rural areas clung to the Ajami script, displaying a high literacy rate and a local preference for writing Swahili in this script. During this era, European powers began to acknowledge the practicality of Swahili as an administrative language. The Germans in particular extensively adopted Swahili in Tanganyika, which was mainland Tanzania, paving the way for its official establishment after Tanzania gained independence. The British authorities also decided to formalize Swahili as the main language across British East Africa, which later became Kenya and Uganda. However, English and several local languages remained widespread. As the winds of change swept across Africa, Swahili emerged as a powerful force in the fight for independence. In Kenya, Uganda and Tanzania, Swahili played a vital role as a means of international political collaboration. Freedom fighters hailing from diverse regions utilize Swahili as a common language to effectively communicate their shared aspirations. Swahili became a symbol of cultural and personal emancipation from European dominance and their languages. It held the power to unite, to bridge divides and to strengthen the collective voice of the people. The early 1960s was a time of great change as countries embraced their newfound independence. Visionary leaders like President Julius Nyerere of Tanzania and Jomo Kenyatta of Kenya recognized that a shared language would bind their diverse populations together, fostering a sense of belonging and a common purpose. These leaders knew that language held immense power, a very influential role in fostering national identity, liberation and unity. And so, they turned their eyes to Swahili. It was during this period that Swahili's influence expanded beyond the coastal regions and became prevalent in various areas. Tanzania in particular emerged as a pioneer, proudly designating Swahili as its official mode of communication. This bold move made Tanzania one of the two African nations, the other one being Ethiopia with Amharic, to put a native African language at the forefront. Education became the cornerstone of this linguistic revolution. In both Tanzania and Kenya, Swahili served as a medium of instruction in schools, which significantly contributed to its spread and adoption. Tanzania exclusively employed Swahili as the language of instruction, while Kenya embraced both Swahili and English in its educational system. But, like any tale, there were shadows amidst the light. The then president of Uganda did not fully embrace the power of Swahili. While it was extensively used in the army and secret police operations, it was not extended to the general population, thus missing the chance to truly unite the nation through the language. 
Swahili's influence continued to grow and in 1966 it inspired Maulana Karenga who was an activist with a fiery passion for the black freedom movement. Inspired by Swahili's power, he introduced the world to the vibrant celebration of Kwanzaa, drawing on the Swahili word Kwanzaa, meaning fast. This celebration encouraged participants to adopt Swahili names and honor one another with Swahili titles of respect. Fast forward to the present, where Swahili has blossomed from an unknown coast language into Africa's most widely recognized language. Its influence extends far beyond the continent, gripping the world's attention. With over 200 million speakers, Swahili stands tall among languages that have such speakers. You will find Swahili in the diverse range of global entertainment with appearances in movies, television series and music. Its presence resonates across broadcasting, radio and online platforms, surpassing any other African languages in reach. While Swahili's future is unknown, Pan-Africanist freedom fighters and political leaders have championed it as a unifying force, a language that can bridge the gaps between nations and foster continental unity. In countries like Tanzania, Kenya, Uganda, Rwanda, Burundi and the Democratic Republic of the Congo, Swahili has become an integral part of daily life. Even in Comoros, the language of Shikomori is seen as a dialect of Swahili, a testament to its widespread influence. Efforts to promote the usage of Swahili continue to gain momentum. The language has been officially adopted as one of the working languages of the African Union, allowing it to be used in official documents, conferences and meetings alongside other widely spoken languages, such as English, French and Arabic. Additionally, Swahili is the official language within the East African community, further solidifying its importance and influence. In 2019, Swahili achieved a significant milestone when it became the only African language recognized by the Southern African Development Community. To celebrate the rich heritage and cultural significance of Swahili, the United Nations declared July the 7th as World Swahili Day. This annual observance aims to promote the utilization and appreciation of Swahili, acknowledging its contributions to African history, linguistics and culture. As our journey through the origins and expansion of Swahili comes to a close, we find ourselves immersed in a language that carries the weight of history and the promise of a united future. Researchers predict that Swahili's reach across the continent will continue to expand with time. As connections grow stronger and Africa moves towards increased integration, there will be a growing need for a common means of communication. Swahili emerges as a strong contender for this role given its widespread usage as both a native and a second language. However, Swahili does face competition in certain regions. In North Africa, Arabic dominates as the primary language, while in West Africa, dominant local languages like Hausa poses the main languages. Despite these challenges, Swahili's appeal and practicality, its historical significance and its role in fostering unity and cooperation make it a compelling candidate for widespread communication across the African continent. Looking forward, the future of Swahili appears promising, with its widespread usage, adoption as an official language in various countries, integration into educational systems, and relevance in regional organizations. Swahili's influence is poised to continue growing. It holds the potential to bridge linguistic and cultural gaps, facilitate communication, and foster a sense of shared identity and unity among the diverse peoples of Africa. So, dear viewers, what are your thoughts on this linguistic journey? Have you experienced the allure of Swahili firsthand? Are you a Swahili speaker or are you planning on learning it? Share your opinions and stories in the comments below and don't forget to subscribe.